Ladies and gentlemen, to present the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage, please welcome Peyton Manning. In sports, we can sometimes become too reliant on statistics. If you hear too many numbers thrown around over and over again, you might stop listening. But in this case, I hope that you are listening because 1,098 wins, 16 SEC titles, and eight national championships truly are incredible. However, they are only a part of why tonight belongs to legendary basketball coach, Pat Summit. I first met Pat in 1994, when I was a freshman at the University of Tennessee. Since then, she's been a mentor and a close friend, someone I can look up to and someone I can talk to. And I know I'm just one of many, many people Pat has guided over the years. The best leaders in sports, leaders like Pat, leaders like the great Arthur Ashe, are the ones who use their game to teach you something about life. That's what Pat has been doing for her players, for her friends, for her fans, for decades. And when she got a piece of news that shocked all of us, as she and some of the people closest to her are about to tell you, Pat Summit just kept on teaching. She's been to the Summit three times now. And Pat Summit wins the fourth of her sparkling career. Over so many years. 39 and 0. So many victories. Tennessee has won the national championship. So many lessons, challenges, and celebrations. 1,000 career wins. It can be easy to miss the full story. Championship in 11 years. Let the record speak for itself. Pat Summit is the winningest coach in college basketball history. This is the story of a woman whose journey has always been about something other than success. It's the story of a farm girl who views the world as a place you don't just live in but a place you change. We had a dairy farm. I just remember milking cows 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. I don't think my grandfather knew what to do with my mom. He just assumed, hey, I can just treat her like the boys, and that's what she became. We were strict on him. Of course, he was a little more stricter than I was. You know, it generally goes that way. My father, he was the one that probably inspired me the most. Times he challenged me and said, I don't know if you'll ever be able to do this. And of course, that's all I needed to hear. And so when the girl fell in love with a sport for boys, she resolved to make it all her own. She became the best basketball player in Montgomery County, an All-American in college, a silver medalist at the Olympics. And at age 22, she was named the head coach of the women's basketball team in her home state at the University of Tennessee. She was tough on us because we were so close in age. She had to make sure that, that we understood she was the coach and we were the players. When I played for her, I thought, man, this lady's crazy. She, she's crazy. And I'd go out of the gym going, I, I, I don't think I can do it. Pat said, it's a lot easier to start tough and get nicer than it is to start nice and get tougher. What do you not understand about passive every time? I didn't mind holding people accountable. I knew I had a lot to learn, but I also knew that coaching was my passion. When she started, the NCAA was still eight years away from recognizing women's basketball as a sport. That was perfect for Pat. It was an opportunity to affect change on the court and way beyond. 
I don't think that she planned to be a pioneer, but I think that she was comfortable being the pioneer. She didn't smash through glass ceilings. She was a glass cutter. You know, she would sort of etch away, you know, at the glass ceiling until she popped out a big old square. We have to have more television exposure. That's going to be significant if we're going to see progress in the next decade. She has so many obstacles to get them on television, to get them recognized, to put women's basketball in the forefront. The men got a bigger locker room, and she fought for us, and we got that bigger locker room. And so she knew what she was doing, and you know, she set, she set a precedent. This is a chance of a lifetime. You can't be afraid to go out and compete and do whatever it takes. Her determination and her success have never been limited just to the game. For Pat Summit, perseverance has always been utterly personal. You would understand that if you knew all the turns her life has taken. The pain and anguish of six miscarriages. The joy when her son was born. Finally, I got Tyler, and he was a gift from God. Pat's never shown her struggles. Just like the miscarriages, just like her divorce, losing her dad, you know, whatever Pat deals with, she just doesn't show it. There's two sides of her. They'll see her piercing into some official or yelling at one of her players, but she knows how to relate to somebody and really be a mom for her players and for me. Her demands went off the court into the way the kids lived and what they did academically, and I think that's why so many of her players uh, have been very, very successful. In 38 years as head coach, every one of Pat Summit's players has graduated. 74 members of the Lady Vol family have followed her path into coaching. Countless others, touched by a phone call, a letter, or a conversation. Coach is there for us as a mentor, and I think I always carry it around where I want to make her proud. And the woman I am today, a lot of that is because of uh, Coach Pat Summit. For nearly four decades, this was the legacy Pat built, all the while continuing to look forward. She said, you know, I know there's something more I'm supposed to be doing. And I said, you don't think changing entire generations of women is enough? And she said, I just know there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. Alongside that thought, the woman who'd always demanded the best of everyone else was finding herself struggling more and more to maintain her own punishing pace. I'd wake up and I would like, where am I? And, you know, I thought, what, what's, what is happening to me? It just seemed like something was wrong. She couldn't juggle as many things at one time. She wasn't Wonder Woman anymore. The diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's came last spring at the Mayo Clinic. I think the initial reaction from my mom and me was, why is this happening? It really seemed unfair for this to happen to her when she was at the height of her career. You know how you have this image of like a superhero and then it's like they kind of have a crack in your, their armor and you're kind of like you see like some vulnerability and stuff. It's just like, you know, she's always been the shoulder that everybody else has had to lean on. Throughout her entire career, Coach had led the way. Throughout her entire life, she had defied expectations. This latest chapter would be no different. She would confront Alzheimer's head on. She decided she would keep coaching. She told the players that this is not a pity party. We're not going to sit here and feel sorry for Pat Summer. There's a courage there to go out and maybe appear vulnerable. A lot of people wanted her to quit, retire, go away, get out of the public eye. To be on public display, really, while you're fighting this disease is so courageous. It amazed everybody for her to be in the spotlight and handle everything the way she had. That's just characteristic of how she's done everything. 
All season long, she was watched more closely than ever. What observers saw was a community she had built rally around her. And Coach Pat Summit led her team to a 16th SEC championship. On behalf of women's college basketball everywhere, we want to pay tribute to you. You are There was hope she would coach longer. But a few weeks later, Pat Summit decided she had led the Tennessee Lady Vols for the final time. A vision of grace surrounding her trademark stubbornness. Think about the good things that happen and what's to come in the future. I wouldn't be the one I am today if it wasn't for you. She was leaving the game she'd been introduced to as a farm girl. A game she had changed forever. A game that had been the tapestry of her legacy. When you say there's a little piece of Pat, you know, all through women's basketball, I mean, I think that's truer than people even realize. If I were to pick the three or four coaches that taught the game of basketball the best during my time in coaching, Pat Summit would be one of them. Her accomplishments transcend statistics. Her influence is really throughout the game, not just Tennessee, but the whole nation. It might be easy to define Pat Summit by how many games she's won and how many championships she's earned. But it's always been about the players she's led, the people she's taught, the courage she has shown. The journey continues now. There's so much more for her to teach us. I know she's come by it. And she seems to be doing mighty well to me now. The amount of people that this woman has impacted in women's basketball is nothing to what she will impact for the cause of Alzheimer's. If I'm not leading, you know, by example, then I'm, I'm not doing the right thing and I want to always do the right thing. Thank you very much. I've always said you win in life with people. And I have been so blessed to have great people in my life. My son Tyler and I appreciate all of your support. And during this time, that's the next challenge for me and Tyler. And it is time to fight as I ask all of you to join me together so we will win. And I can tell you, tonight I am deeply touched as all of you heard my story. I'm gonna keep on keeping on. I promise you that. Thank you. supporter of Human Achievement salutes Pat Summit, this year's Arthur Ashe Award recipient.